What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this weekend's update. Today is Friday, June 19th. Hope everybody had a fantastic week of trading. A lot of stuff to talk about today. So today's video is going to be a little bit longer than normal, but uh, very important stuff. So stay tuned for what we've got. So much I had to create an agenda so I didn't forget about it. Uh, so first off, who got caught being hot? Talk about that. I'll go through all the alerts, go through all the current positions, give you an update on our new membership platform that's rolling out this weekend, uh, the new community platform, and then uh, an update on the day trading. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about what's going on with that, and then a new trading platform coming in the next couple months. So let's jump in, and then I'll fill you in on the details. So starting with... Who got caught being hot? So this week goes to one of our female hotties. Uh, who continues to post great questions, great comments. Uh, in her profile, says she's a newbie trader, but she's still jumping in, answering questions. I mentioned, you know, we need more women trade hackers. I've always thought that women had the mentality and the, the disciplined mindset to be better traders than men. But for some reason, there are just fewer women who trade. And so we need to get some more. So if you guys know any trading women send them to the community uh anyway in addition to that patricia congrats you got caught being hot keep up the good work uh keep uh keep doing your thing and love having you in the community all right so let's go to the alerts starting with monday and and for those of you who haven't seen it yet this is a look inside the new membership platform so a little bit different look and feel. Hope you like it. We've got the, uh, obviously the trade type symbol, initial strategy, the toss string, IV percentile, days to expiration, uh, the trade commentary, and then the legs, which is a new, a new feature that you'll be seeing both in the, uh, uh, post in the membership area, as well as the email that you get when the, when the alert goes out. So, uh, I know a lot of people, new traders, get a little bit confused about which legs we're buying and selling and calls and puts, and so hopefully this will clear up some of that confusion. All right, so DIA uh, was a first trade on Monday. So what we did is we just rolled one of our short call verticals, adjusted the strikes appropriately. We were over 50% of max profit on this piece, and so we just went ahead and rolled that out. Uh, to August. Now we went out to August with 67 days to expiration, which is typically a little bit longer than we like to do. But I've mentioned this before with these short Delta plays, it's okay to go out beyond 60 days. Um, and that's what we did here just to extend duration, diversify a little bit. We still have the other one in July uh, with at, at that point, 32 days to expiration. So just spreading out our DTEs a little bit. So DIA, let's take a look at where we're at with that. So here is the one that we rolled from that alert. And you can see price has moved higher since we did that. So it's a little bit out of range. Then we've got the other one in July, which is a little ways out of range. So looking for some downside action to benefit both of those. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in SPY. So we had an iron condor in SPY. We closed out the put vertical side uh, as price ran higher. And then price came back into our range. And so we closed out the call vertical side. So that one worked exactly like we wanted it to. So we booked over 40% of max profit on our initial credit on that, on that, just that June piece. So we're still holding our July iron condor. So let's take a look at SPY and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here is our July iron condor. You can see price is hanging out right here. So we're down a tiny bit. Uh, implied volatility has gone up since we put this on. It's moved around a little bit. So just waiting for some time to pass there. Uh, while we're here, let me talk about the other. Well, actually, I'll come back to it. Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we added another weekly double calendar. We already had one on. We added another one. And so... Um, so this one had three days to expiration. Now we so we closed that today on Friday, and let me go to go to the platform and tell you what happened. So these last couple of days we really had uh, a lot of implied volatility contraction. So we closed we had two pieces on. We closed one out on Thursday, and booked a nice profit. I think three hundred and seventy five dollars ish on that one, uh, which equates to over thirty percent return on capital. 
And then the other one we held till Friday. So that's that's what we've been doing. We've, a lot of times we'll have two of these on. We'll close one out on Thursday with one DTE, and then we'll close the other one out on Friday with zero days to expiration. Uh, now, the one we closed out today on Friday it was is this one. Now, we closed this out and basically did a scratch trade. I think we made like 25 bucks on it. Uh, had you held later in the day, you know, now it would be up 500 or, you know, just about 30 minutes ago, it was up like six or 700, but that's a tough hold, right? I mean, you don't, you don't know what you're just kind of holding it till the last minute and you're kind of at the mercy of a very short term swing. Uh, but had you held it, hopefully some of you all did and you booked even more profit. I just put this in here as the theoretical, uh, just to give you an idea of where it's at right now. And we've got about 30 minutes until the close at the time of this recording. So, you know, with these things, you just, you just don't know. Right. And so that's why it's, it's, I talk about this all the time in the community. You've got to have a set situation of what, of, knowing what you're going to do with the trade when you enter it. And so we've been very consistent about how we've been managing these where, you know, if we have a couple on, we'll take one off at one day, to, one day's expiration, one off at, at zero because, and sometimes we benefit from that. Sometimes we miss that a little bit. So it, it just depends. And you just don't know. These are so Vega sensitive that you don't know what volatility is going to do, especially between the front and the back week that you've just got to, you've got to stay mechanical. And so that's what we're doing here. Uh, oh, and then, yeah, okay, so that's SPX. Uh, SPY opening trade. So then we opened an iron duck in SPY, did this one with 14 days to expiration. So let's take a look at that. Going back to SPY. So we've got that iron condor I just mentioned, and then we've got this uh, iron duck. So price is hanging out right here. We're up a tiny bit still in the beak area. So just holding this. And again, we'll just hold this till near expiration. Or obviously, if we make a huge move down and we get we get way down here past the break even, we'll have to close it out. But right now, it's looking pretty solid. I Obviously, ideally, we'd like it just to hang out right here and then you know, head into the duck head for expiration. But doesn't always work that way, but that's the plan on that. And then lastly, while we're here on SPY, let's talk about we've got a bunker on. Now, price has obviously moved higher on us since we put this on. So we're down a little bit. We're down to down a couple hundred bucks. Now, this one expires 822. So we like to be out of these bunkers by about 622. So about 60 days to expiration, which is going to happen over the weekend, right? Or Monday. And so on Monday, we'll probably close this out. Um, I was going to close it out today, but I figured, you know what, let's just give it over the weekend in case we do get a, a swift move lower. Uh, that'll, that'll benefit it. We're not getting a bunch of sag, you know, down into that Death Valley area in, in our P&L line here. So it's still pretty flat and, you know, any down movement is going to benefit us. Uh, we've got the upward slope still of this of the PL line. So that's why I'm okay leaving leaving it on over the weekend. Now if it moves higher, obviously we'll lose more than we would have had we taken it off today, but I'm willing to take that risk because the amount we could lose is not very much. So that's SPY. Uh, and then expiration trade. So this was in this was a duck that we let expire in the beak, booked beak profit on that one. I think it was like $125 profit in the beak. Uh, closing trade in SPX. Oh, by the way, in, in SPY, just going back to this, one of the reasons I let, went ahead and let it expire is with TOSS, there is no exercise or assignment fee. So, you know, we didn't have to pay the commission to exit. Now, uh, Tastyworks does have an exercise assignment fee. So you may want to, you know, there, and there's no uh, there's no cost to trade close, uh, to close trades in Tastyworks. So if you had Tastyworks, you probably wanted to close that out. But you know, we post, we, we, uh, we talk about in that, that in the community all the time. So hopefully that, that makes sense. Um, next trade SPX. So this was one of our weekly double calendars. The one we closed on Thursday booked about a 300, I think it was $375 profit on that one. Next trade DE. So we had two sets of these short call verticals in John Deere. This one came down nicely with the with the down movement in the market. We were over 50% of max profit. And let me show you why we went ahead and just closed this instead of rolling. Uh, for one, we still have a piece here. So we've still got this one in July. It's hanging out pretty close to where it is from where we rolled it. The other piece is if we were trying to roll out to August, 
Uh, now there's a tiny bit of open interest, but at that point there was actually zero. I mean, at all these contracts, there was zero open interest, and these spreads were even wider than they are right now. So it just didn't make sense to roll into August. Uh, so we went ahead and just closed that out, booked that profit on that piece, and we're still holding the piece in July. SPX opening trade. So we opened up another weekly double calendar, this one with seven days in the front, 10 in the back. And this was done today, this morning. So let's go back to SPX while I was there. I did not show you that one. Let's just go to the Analyze tab. Come on, Toss. Toss, I don't know if for you guys, but Toss has been running a little slow for me lately. So we put this one on. Price was pretty centered when we put it on. Now you can see uh, with price moving down today, you know, the S&Ps were up significantly. Now they're basically flat on the day, right? But right coming into the close here, half hour from the close. So you can see price has moved down, but still well within range. I uh, would like to get another one on the uh, another one of these on early next week if implied volatility supports it, um, but we'll see what happens. So for now, we've got this one on and we'll manage it as we always do. Closing trade. So this is the other closing uh, trade in that other weekly double calendar that I mentioned. Basically scratched that one, booked a little like $25 profit. Uh, FXI, we had a bunker and we ended up just closing this out. We're, again, we're nearing that 60 days to expiration. Price was starting to sag in that into that Death Valley, so we went ahead and just closed this, took a couple hundred dollar loss, and we're going to look to reposition uh, potentially another bunker early next week, assuming the market doesn't fall apart before we have a chance. Uh, so let's take a look at our other positions. So ES, we've got two sets of long put verticals. This one here, we're up about 460 some dollars on that piece. This one... We are just at the break even. So just holding that for that short delta exposure. Gold, we've got an iron condor, pretty centered here, up a couple hundred dollars, just waiting for some more theta decay. Natty gas, uh, we've got this strangle, which has been adjusted into a straddle. Uh, we're up about 500 plus dollars since we did that roll. Uh, ZB, a bond, this is our adjusted inverted strangle, up about 570 bucks since we did that roll. Still working our way back to profits in both bonds and natty gas, but uh, at this point on this piece, uh, since we did the roll, that's where we're up there. Uh, Apple, uh, actually down a percent today, but uh, a little bit out of range, so just holding this for that short delta exposure, looking for some downside action in Apple. I went over DE, DIA. I mentioned that one. IWM, we've got another uh, short delta exposure here. We've got a long put vertical. Uh, you can see we're up about $170 on that piece. And then this one is almost at... Uh, almost at 50% of max profit. So if this goes much lower into next week, we will go ahead and roll that one out to August. This is in the July monthly cycle. This one is in the weeklies. And then um, and then we've got a couple bunkers. One, I got a question on this one in the community today. This one is uh, expires in August, and this is a bunker. Now, typically on our standard bunker, just like we teach in the class, uh, once we get down to that 60 days to expiration, we are going to close this out. Now, this one's a little bit different because we just put this one on a week ago. And so we put this one on thinking that we might get a quick move lower. Now, that hasn't happened. It's, it's Price has moved higher on us, so we're down about $165 on this trade. But we're not looking to close this out necessarily uh, 60 days to expiration because we just put it on. So since we just put it on, we can hold it a little bit longer. And I put in the commentary, we'll hold it till about you know, maybe 7 uh, July 22nd at the latest. I mean, if we start to see this profit really sag and price isn't moving lower, then we'll then we'll take it off quicker. Uh, but but that's the uh, that's the plan with that one. Then we've got this other bunker that we have had on a while, and this is out in September, and this has moved down nicely since we put it on. We're up a few hundred bucks on this one, but just continuing to hold, see if we can get some more downside movement in IWM. QQQ, we got a couple of short call verticals. Price is hanging out right here on the break even on both of those combined. So just waiting for some downside action to benefit that. SMH, we've got this adjusted strangle. Price is out of our range, but remember, we, uh, we've we already adjusted this. So if we look at the puts, 
we've st the untested side, we've still got a decent amount of premium left in those. So we're not looking to roll up that untested side yet. And we've got plenty of time. In July, we've got 28 days. So either later next week or the following, early the following week, we will look to potentially roll that one. I mentioned SPX, I mentioned SPY, XBI. We've got this adjusted strangle. Price is hanging out right out here on the break even area. So just looking for a little downside action to get back into range there. XLK, we've got this uh, another short ver uh, long put vertical. Price is hanging out right at the break even. Looking for some downside action there. So we are on our short delta versus our theta. We're right at about two to one. So uh, we're positioned well for a down move. Uh, we're not positioned too short if the market continues higher, but uh, that's the uh, that's the situation. So I like where we're at here. I, I want to get on more positions. You know, we've got these, a bunch of our positions are these short delta positions. So I want to get some more positions on. Hopefully we get a little bit of down movement next week. We can sell some premium, add some ducks and uh, and keep that keep that train going. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Let's go back to our agenda and talk about the new membership platform. Okay. So I mentioned this is, uh, we've already, we've already rolled this out to new members last week. And so new people coming on board, they were, they're already jumping in and we want to do that as kind of a test. Uh, now this weekend, the transition of our current members is a big project. So that's happening over the weekend. So hopefully that there's very little disruption to you. Uh, I know there's been a little bit of disruption because someone not naming names, but his initials might have been SB, uh, changed the links inadvertently a little too quick. And so what happened was some of, some of you guys were having problems logging in. So if uh, this weekend or today, if you're trying to log into our old our current membership platform, just go to navigationtrading.com slash login, and you can do that there. Uh, once the, the new one is updated, uh, those login links will, will go to the new, new platform and you'll be able to log in. So uh, let me show you what that looks like. Uh, let me just sign out here and you'll come to this page here and then you just sign in and we'll we'll send out we're going to send out an email this weekend and and basically you're going to use the same email we will supply the password for you and then um and then you'll be able to log in and all should go well but if you do have any you know issues after sunday don't there's going to be some weird stuff going on this weekend so don't worry about that don't email us we know what's going on but if at you know sunday evening ish let's say if if you have any questions or issues just email support at navigationtrading.com and uh, we'll make sure we get you fixed there's going to be some little things that happen so please bear with us we are we are not web developers we are traders so hopefully um we want to get this right and we've Gosh, we've spent so much time on this. So uh, look forward to rolling it out to you. Uh, but there will be, I'm sure there'll be some little little issues that we didn't even come across in our testing uh, that uh, we want to get right for you all. But so let us know uh, next week if, if you do come, any, come across anything like that. New community platform. So we talked about this a couple months ago. I, I gave, uh, gave you guys access in the current community, sent you a link that you could kind of go in and check it out and give feedback. And so we are going to be switching over to the new, new community platform. Uh, I, I don't know for sure. I got to talk to our developer. I'm not sure. I can't remember if that's actually rolling out this weekend as well, or if it's going to be next week, but expect to see that new uh, community platform, more like a forum type structure. Uh, but it's going to be good as far as, uh, as as the communication and, and keeping track of posts and easy to navigate and stuff like that. And we got a lot of good feedback from you all. So hopefully like that. And then uh, day trading. I know you've been, this is the moment you've been waiting for. I know you, a lot of you guys are very interested in this and we are definitely pushing through on this to get it out to you as quickly as possible. A uh, couple things. One uh, we've created a new private Facebook group. Uh, it's a beta Facebook group. Only We're only telling you pro members about it for now. Uh, and, and this is where we're going to be doing a couple things. We are going to be posting more information about our trades. Right now, we're just posting our daily um, our daily uh, P&Ls and things like that. Let me just go to it here. So just go to, well, let me go back to this real quick. 
Uh, if you want to join, go to facebook.com slash groups slash navigation trading, or you can just search on Facebook for uh, day trading options for income, or you can just search navigation trading. You'll find this day trading options for income Facebook group. So what you'll see is where uh, Dr. Chad Searcy and I are posting our P&Ls for the day. So you can kind of follow along with what we're doing from that standpoint. And then, um, and then we're going to be doing some other things. We're going to be doing some live streams in this Facebook group. Uh, we're doing this for a couple of reasons. So we're not going to, you might be asking, why not just post in the community? Well, a couple things. One, we're transitioning to that new platform. That's one. Two, uh, once we get through this new membership transition, um, you know, we, we do want to, we do want to get more exposure to help more people learn how to trade and, and specifically with this strategy as well. So, uh, people that are on Facebook searching for trading with op- trading options or day trading, hopefully we'll find us, we'll get some more exposure that way. Uh, we're also going to have a, an affiliate program to where, you know, if you do have friends or 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 people who follow you or or, or people that you know who are interested in trading, uh, you you as members will be able to refer them and get uh, get a, a revenue share. So um, so look forward look for that in the in the coming future as well. But uh, back to this day trading. Um, so go to facebook.com slash groups slash navigation trading. If you're interested in what we're doing with the day trading, you, it's a must that you join this this group. Uh, like I said, we're going to be posting updates here. We're going to be doing some live streams uh, leading up to when we release the course that will show you kind of what we're doing and get you up to speed. Uh, and we're going to be posting other things uh, within the within the Facebook group too. So Make sure you jump in there and check it out, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna show you kind of what what we've been doing from a PNL standpoint on our day trading here here in just a minute. But before I jump over to that, uh, one last thing on the agenda here: new trading platform. So um, we have been in talks with a couple of different brokers and software engineers about a custom solution to be able to trade um, a custom solution for navigation traders to where uh, not only is it is it customized from a standpoint of for example um, trading an iron duck let's say where you can simply uh, click iron duck and boom it populates the strikes and everything for you and you can then you can drag and drop and, and adjust those. So from that perspective, uh, from, from trading the strategies that we trade, it's going to be all navigation trading customized. Uh, the other thing is, and, and probably the, the coolest thing about it is the commission structure. So, and when I say commission structure, I should say lack of commission structure, meaning zero commissions to trade stocks, zero commissions to trade options. Uh, that that's a big deal, especially if you're going to be doing this day trading, which is pretty commission intensive. Uh, just to give you an idea, um, before I jump over to the details of this, you know, this month netted over ten thousand um, dollars trade uh, day trading, but I also paid three thousand dollars in commissions, and that's to Tastyworks, which is the lower of you know between Toss and Tastyworks. I mean, that's the lower commission structure, right? A dollar to open, zero to close. And I paid, I, I generated $3,000 of commissions to Tastyworks. And so if you think about that, instead of netting 10 grand, I would have netted, if I had zero commissions, I would have netted 13. That's almost a 30% jump in profit or 30% uh, that I lost out on just in paying commissions. So uh, commissions can be a big deal, especially for super, super active. It's not as big of a deal for our core kind of strategies that we're holding for a month and and, and that kind of thing, but it's still a factor, right? Uh, and I know you guys know that, uh, but for, especially for super active in this day trading that we're talking about, commissions are an even bigger deal. And so don't have any more information, so please don't email questions or anything on this, but we will be talking about it as it comes to more fruition, uh, probably looking at August, September uh, before that is completely ready, but super excited about that and uh, and can't wait to to share that with you as well. So got some other things coming. I know a couple people uh, are excited about our pairs trading course, which we are also working on. Uh, we've We've gotten through about 
probably 30% of that as far as the details of the course and the documentation and things. So uh, that's going to be a little bit later, but um, definitely on the horizon as well. And we've got a couple other things I can't mention. So, all right, Andre from Prague, I know you like to be teased. So there's your tease for the week, buddy. (laughs) All right, let's talk more about uh, this day trading. So Day trading options for income, that's kind of what we're, we're calling it, kind of with the theme of navigation trading. So for the week, for this week, 615 through 619 booked a little over $2,000. And let me break that down. So on the 15th, I just want to talk a little bit about what happened here. So on the 15th, uh, that was Monday, uh, had a, a, a red day, $880 loss. And part of that was I was traveling over the weekend, still on Monday. I was in a hotel. My computer crashed. I couldn't get out of a position uh, that ended up costing me like $1,300. And so took an $880 loss on Monday, but that is part of trading, right? I mean, it, you're going to have a computer crash at some point, so I want to I make sure I show this. Uh, to, and, and then I also was kind of in a hurry, so I didn't get a screenshot of my, of my position. So anyway, $880 loss on Monday. Tuesday, uh, about a fourteen uh, $1,499 profit. Um, traded pretty well. Uh, didn't really have any mistakes or anything Anything happened. So just a good overall day, $1,500 profit on the day. On the 17th, uh, booked a little over $2,100. And the only loser was Microsoft, and what's funny about that is I actually accidentally traded puts when I meant to trade calls, and so I realized it after I was down three hundred sixty-four dollars, and I got out. So that would have been about a six hundred dollar P and L swing. I lost three hundred sixty-four. I would would have should have been up three hundred sixty-four had I had I put the wrong thing in, right thing in. But again, I'm showing you this because a this is real, right? I mean, this is real money. This is not paper money. This is not hypothetical. This is not back testing. This is this is the real deal, and this is real life. And this is stuff that can happen. Uh, I've done that a couple times where I accidentally put in puts versus calls or calls versus puts when I meant to do the other. So it's pretty fast paced, and so sometimes you do that, and you're like damn it, what did I just do? So anyway, is what it is. Still booked over 2,100 bucks on that day. Uh, the next day was a, a losing day. I lost about a little over 1,400 bucks. Actually traded pretty well. You know, so I was talking to Chad about this one. I was like, you know, sometimes the bad guys just win, right? I mean, sometimes the market just wins. The only mistake I'll say on this was on Amazon. Um, I traded way bigger than I should have at this point in the day. Uh, I've talked about this before, but we're only trading for the first 90 minutes after the market opens with this strategy. So in, in my time zone, 8.30 to 10 a.m. And what I, what I like to do is, is the first trade or two that I take of the day after the market opens, I like to, I like to be pretty light on that position. In other words, smaller size, because I'm just trying to get my head in the game, just trying to get the juices flowing. And then my second, third, you know, kind of that the meat of the morning, which it would be about, you know, 9 a.m. to 930. That's when I do my normal or larger size. And then after 930, as we're getting closer to that 10 a.m., at closer to that 90 minute mark after the market opens, I really scale down my size because the the really the best time to trade is in that kind of 9 a.m. to 9:30 that 30 minute period uh, just after the market opens and before 10 a.m. and so that's that that's how I've been really sizing it now the Amazon trade I went it was it was probably about 9:45 and I I was trying to I was down a little bit on the day I was like you know what I'm gonna go bigger if I can make this a winner I might go green for the day and that's just not how you want to trade and so. Ended up uh, taking a loss. It probably should have been about a three hundred and fifty dollar loss, but it was about a nine hundred. Overall, it still would have been a losing day. But um, that is that is what it is. So that's what happened on Thursday, and then today, uh, seven hundred fifty two dollar uh, winning day. And uh, my only mistake today, traded traded pretty, pretty well, there's always going to be, what we've noticed is there's always going to be days where you miss out on trades. I mean, there was one on Amazon today that was a blatant, just great, great entry and just completely didn't see it. Uh, you know, we're looking at about 15 to 20 different symbols and sometimes you just miss them. And, you know, after the fact, you're like, ah, 
if I would have had that, blah, 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 blah. But that's, that's part of this deal. And so we're, you know, part of the mindset is making sure that you're not having FOMO too much, you know, fear of missing out and you're just, you're trading what you can. You're not going to get them all. There are trades that we miss every day. Either we don't see them in time or we put in an order and we don't get filled. So that happens every single day. And, uh, and that's just part of this. So there's opportunity every single day to make money. Uh, it just depends. Do you get in on the right ones or do you get in, you know, at the right time? Uh, and, and, and we'll talk about all this in the class. It's, it's, it's a lot of details, but, uh, so the only mistake I made today was on NVIDIA, uh, I held this one longer than I should have. So it was very clear when I should have gotten out. And I was like, you know what? I got out of half of it. I'm gonna, I was like, I'm just going to let the other half ride and end up turning into a, a loser. So, you know, these, these are just little things. And these are just little nuances that I'm working out. And in fact, let's go, let me go to this spreadsheet. And I'll show you, since I've been keeping track of p uh, let's see right here. Hopefully you can see this okay. So going back to May 22nd. So it's been basically a month, right? Today's 619, basically a month. Uh, came out of the gate, obviously very hot uh, with some big wins. Now, a couple things. I'm showing you this for a couple reasons. A, I want to show you mistakes that I made. B, I want to show you what I wouldn't have done uh, and, and a couple other things. So uh, in this first part, I think I was, I, I, well, I don't think. I was trading too big for the for the account size or the buying power requirements that I'm really going to use when we actually roll this out. So you can kind of discount those values a little bit as well, as far as maybe being a little bit too high of wins. Um, but it is what it is, right? I mean, that's real money. I booked it. Uh, a couple other things. One, like on June 3rd here, okay, this was the biggest losing day, down 4,500 bucks on this day. This this day I did I did not follow the rules I did not follow my own rules and I kind of revenge, revenge traded until 2 p.m. instead of being done by um, by 10 a.m. and one thing I've I've realized about this it's it's very it's a very it's it's a mental game it's a mind game it's a mindset game more than anything the strategies are there they work you get opportunities every day it's can you control your emotions and your discipline. And, and so this was a very expensive lesson that happened, uh, this day. And guess what? I thought, okay, that's a very expensive lesson. I've learned my lesson, but guess what I did? I came back one week later and did the exact same thing again. I traded till, you know, 1230 or one on that day and just kind of revenge trading, trying to, trying to get back. And what I've realized for me and everybody's different, but what happened on both of these days is I was up early. I mean, in, in, I think on, on this day, I was up a couple thousand dollars by, by 9.30 a.m. And I, I just decided to keep going and get bigger. And, and next thing you know, I'm down. And then I'm trying to revenge trade because I was like, I was up 2,000. I've got to get back there. And then it just all fell apart. Now, a couple things. One, I'm, I'm doing this now to understand my own mental discipline with this type of trading so that I can help you all. Second, that, you know, once we roll this out and, and we're, we're trading and I'm, I'm live trading, this never would have happened. Right. I mean, when I'm doing it for you all, that never would have happened. Uh, that day would have not happened. That day would have not happened. So, you know, I mean, this is real money. This is real loss. And that's why I'm showing you this. Cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking it out. But what I will tell you is that never would have happened once we roll this out to you all and, and I'm actually trading in front of you all because I'll have more discipline because I think I care about you guys more than I care about my, my own profitability. <laughs> so um, so anyway, just just something to keep in mind. So if you, you know if you take that seven over eight thousand dollars, I mean this this number here, ten thousand dollars for the month could have easily been eighteen thousand. but it is what it is. Uh, and, and I promise you this, you guys are going to do this too. If you don't listen to me and if you kind of get in this mindset and start revenge trading, and I would I would guess that almost every one of you, it's going to happen to at least once. Uh, it's just, it's it's hard to control yourself sometimes. Uh, and, and, and some of you are going to have better mental discipline than others, but I'm just telling you right now, and the reason I'm showing it to you is because this can happen, but if you follow the rules, it won't. 
Um, so a couple other little losers. Uh, this day here, I was actually in meetings. I was on Zoom calls, and I was trying to do a little bit of trading, and that just is not a good thing. So I ended up just closing everything out, booked a tiny $128, $128, dollar profit. Uh, so just I'm just making notes here on, on some different things. Uh, this was Monday. I mentioned my computer crashed. The hotel internet was crappy. Uh, so I ended up, ended up losing on that day. Now, again, you know, that's going to happen. Some, your computer is going to crash. Your, your internet's going to go out. Something's going to happen. That's going to happen to everybody at some point if you, if you're trading every day. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it in there because it's real. Uh, and then this is the rest of the week that I already showed you. So that, that's kind of where we're at at this point. Um, now the other question, you know, you guys probably have is, well, how much capital are you using on these days? Um, you know, up here, I was probably utilizing up upwards of maybe, um, you know, 25, 30, maybe as high as $35,000 worth of capital. Um, uh, after that, I mean, in these days here, I've, I've never used any more than than twenty or twenty five thousand dollars in capital at any one time. So, you know, if you look, at, if you say, okay, you've used, you know, at any one time, you're you're using twenty five thousand dollars in capital, um, and you generate, you know, ten thousand dollars. That's a pretty darn good uh, return. You know, over thirty percent, over thirty five percent return on capital in a month. Um, you know, so that's that's pretty powerful stuff. Now, you know, you you can't have. I mean you can do whatever you want, but you know, in my mind, you can't have $25,000 in an account. Uh, you know, you better have, you know, at least $50,000 in that account if you're going to be trading that much. Now, now with this, we're, we're actually buying options. So you are limited. Your risk is limited to the amount that you're the debit you're paying. So, uh, it's not like these things could go against you and you could lose more than your, um, more than you're risking. So theoretically you could, you could trade more than, you know, 30, more than 50%, uh, you know, up to, 90, 95, hundred percent of your account, but that's just not good money management. So, uh, as a return on capital, great return on capital. If I'm using about 25 grand, making over 10 grand on that, on that capital, that's, that's solid stuff. So that is where we are at on the day trading. Um, let's see, was there anything else I wanted to mention? Yeah, just, just make sure you go to the, um, go to the Facebook group, join it. Facebook.com slash groups slash navigation trading. It's the day trading options for income. Uh, feel free to uh, to join that if you want to follow along. Like I said, we're going to be posting our PL screenshots and kind of comments each day, as well as, like I said, doing some potential live streams in that group. So if you're interested in the day trading, that is going to be the place to be, at least initially. Uh, and then we've got some other cool stuff coming once we actually roll that out. So Hope everybody has a great weekend. Talk to you Monday. See ya.